This lecture will include a brief overview of literacy and literacy development. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to define literacy, determine the connections between literacy and language, differentiate between the different stages of literacy and reading development, and outline how literacy instruction and learning change over time as student skills develop. In current research, there is not one unifying definition of literacy. Literacy can have multiple meanings and is context and culture specific. One example of a holistic definition is from the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization 2018. Literacy is defined as the ability to identify, understand, interpret, create, communicate, and compute using printed and written materials associated with varying contexts. Literacy context can change, meaning that a person could have cultural liter literacy, technological literacy, financial literacy, civic literacy, or many other types of literacy. With this in mind, it is important to understand that there are underlying skills necessary to be literate. These are the ability to read, write, speak, and listen in a specific language and culture. Literacy develops in stages and progresses on a continuum throughout life. Learners progress through the continuum, which helps them navigate and participate in their community, culture, and society which they are a part of. Keith et al. 2011 shares that all people are capable of acquiring literacy skills and that literacy is considered a human right. All teachers have the responsibility to support students in progressing on their literacy continuum, regardless of grade level and content area being taught. Opportunities to develop literacy should be embedded in daily content specific activities. Teachers in every content area and grade level have the collective responsibility to support literacy development. Teachers must develop the knowledge and skills to support literacy development for students in different stages of literacy development. Bennell and Falkus 2007 share several connections in language and literacy that are important to consider. Students learn by talking. Teachers must engage students in conversation that is grounded in a variety of texts, those that students read, hear read aloud, or write, and that expands their ability to comprehend and use language. Reading, writing, listening, and speaking are interrelated. Students need to process a large amount of written language. Dynamic language and literacy instruction should provide daily opportunities for students to read text of their choice independently, read more challenging instructional material with teacher guidance, and to hear teacher-selected and grade-appropriate texts read aloud. The ability to read and comprehend texts is expanded through talking and writing. Students need to acquire a wide range of ways to write about their reading, and also to talk about texts with the teacher and other students. Learning deepens when students engage in reading, talking, and writing about texts across many different instructional contexts. Communication is contextual. Each mode of communication provides a new way to process the ideas learned. Language and literacy are sociocultural. The sociocultural perspective of language and literacy emphasizes that both language and literacy are involved in human development and learning. Language and literacy reflect ideologies, values, beliefs, and social practices. There are several frameworks that share the progression for student literacy development. Three frameworks will be discussed. Diagnostic Teaching of Reading by Barbara Walker, 2011, shares the five stages of literacy development that occur in schooling. These stages include emergent, early developing, developing, 
strategic, and complex. Each stage has unique characteristics or key understandings that distinguish each of them from the other stages. In the emergent stage, typically begins at a young age when students encounter literacy and social situations. They learn to communicate using oral language and situational context. To read in this stage, they must infer meaning or printed words. During this phase, Walker emphasizes that students associate oral language with its written equivalent. In the early developing stage, it typically begins in first grade and continues into second grade. In this stage, students use patterns in words and patterns, patterns in stories to extend their understanding of literacy. Students are focused on textual information and place effort in understanding the text. The developing stage is when students begin to increase understanding of more challenging sentence structures and use them to figure out more sophisticated text. As sentence structure becomes more complex, students focus on predicting sentence meaning to increase fluent reading of words and phrases. This phase typically occurs at the end of second grade through fourth grade. The strategic stage usually begins in the middle of the fifth grade and continues through middle school. At this stage, texts are more difficult and present increasingly complex ideas. Learners begin to have more complex thoughts and begin the ability to work through higher level and metacognitive skills. The complex stage is when learners use both reading and writing to construct and reflect on meaning. In this stage, students are developing the ability to link information from a variety of sources and cross-check information. They begin to understand multiple perspectives and are increasingly reflective. Learners also have the ability to use reasoning skills in this stage. It is important to remember that each student passes through the phases at a different pace and a different time. The text further shares that literacy is impacted by prior knowledge, as well as the strategies that students utilize within each literacy event and in each phase. Another framework is the synchrony of literacy development and the layers of the orthography outlined in Bear et al. 2019 in Words Their Way. The text shares that there is a level of synchrony or simultaneous development that occurs with reading, writing, and spelling skills, which is depicted in the table. Bear et al. 2019 place students in one of four stages of reading and writing development. The emergent stage is where students pretend read, develop concepts of work, and pretend write. The beginning stage is characterized by students beginning to read aloud, word by word using finger pointing. Learners also utilize word by word writing and gradually increase to few words to a paragraph in length. The transitional stage is when learners are approaching fluency, phrasal, with some expression in oral reading, while there is an emergence of silent reading. Learners gain more organization and skill in the writing in this phase. The intermediate or advanced phase is when learners read fluently with expression and develop a variety of reading styles. Vocabulary grows with reading experience. This phase is also characterized by fluent reading, building written expression, and voice. Learners also understand different styles and genres of writing. The author shares that these levels coincide with the five spelling stages, as well as oral language and vocabulary development. Reading, writing, spelling, oral language, and vocabulary inform one another. The text emphasizes that learners will vary in their rate of progress through, through these stages, but may tend, many tend to follow the same order of development. Another framework was created by Shaw in 1996, who developed six specific stages of reading development. 
Stage zero, the pre-reading or pseudo-reading stage is when the learner is becoming familiar with language, letters, and sounds. The learner gains control of oral language and still relies heavily on pictures and text. They analyze word similarities, make predictions, and begin to recognize familiar written words. Stage one, the initial reading and decoding stage is when the learner is becoming aware of the relationships between sounds and letters and can begin to apply knowledge to text. The learner understands the alphabetic principle and alphabetic code. The reader begins to use decoding and can break the code of print. Stage two, the confirmation and fluency stage is when the learner begins to confirm the knowledge acquired in previous stages and begins to gain fluency and skills. Decoding skills continue to develop. The reader has the ability to determine meaning and concepts in print and uses them interactively. Stage three, the reading and learning stage is when the learner has enough reading skill to gain new information, often resulting in a change of motivation for many readers. Vocabulary development increases as a result of exposure to written word. Stage four, the multiplicity and complexity stage is when the learner has the ability to analyze text and understand multiple points of view. This allows readers to think and respond critically to text. Stage five, the construction and reconstruction stage is when the learner has the ability to read selectively and form opinions about what they read. The reader continues to develop the ability to construct and reconstruct knowledge. Students will typically develop these skills within the age ranges listed. However, there are circumstances when students are slower or faster in their reading development. Also, due to various reasons, there are times when a student may not master the skills required within a specific stage. Hall's framework also notates how various components of literacy change within each stage. The framework describes the changes in concepts of print, phonemic awareness, alphabetic principle, fluency, vocabulary, writing development, stage appropriate reading material, student knowledge, as well as teaching practices and principles as learners progress through their reading development in these stages. Although this graphic is small, it demonstrates the comprehensive nature of Shaw's framework. The next section will discuss diagnostic teaching and effective instruction. Diagnostic teaching is the process of using instruction and assessment at the same time to identify the instructional adjustments that facilitate all students to become independent learners. Diagnostic teachers use a combination of various instructional strategies and formative and summative assessments to determine students' literacy behaviors, as well as their strengths and areas for growth in the language domains, reading, writing, listening and speaking. In literacy instruction, the goal is to use data to identify the student's range of performance, then identify strategies and the amount of needed teacher support and scaffolding to support growth on the literacy continuum. Diagnostic teaching emphasizes the idea that teachers are first teachers, not just the giver of assessments. As they teach lessons within their context, they examine how students read, write, and respond. In addition to assessment data, this helps inform decisions about future instructional practices. Walker 2011 emphasizes that reading and writing should be an active process. It can be described as a way students employ a strategic process to help them monitor and elaborate on their understanding. Active readers and writers connect prior knowledge and the text to construct meaning. They transform new information and reconcile it with, with what they have learned previously. They monitor their understanding and revise their thinking. They check to ensure they understand and examine meaning. 
They use knowledge and perceptions within a situational context to help select the strategies and information used in a literacy event. There are times that differences in learning can result in inhibiting the process of learning to actively read and write. Students may have difficulty with reading and writing, maybe learning English as a second language, maybe from an underprivileged background, may have a different cultural background than the dominant culture, or have an identified learning disability that impacts their ability to actively read and write. In order to address the many student differences that may be in your classroom, it is important that a teacher identifies, understands, and plans for students' literacy needs. Being a diagnostic teacher is essential to determine the needs of each individual. Shaw states that literacy can be seen as dependent on instruction, with the corollary that quality of instruction is key. This view emphasizes the developmental nature of literacy, the passage of children through successive stages of literacy, in each of which the reading and writing tasks change and the role of the instructor has to change accordingly. Research tells us that effective teachers have the mindset that all students can learn. Literacy is the collective responsibility of all teachers, regardless of grade level and subject area being taught. Practice developing literacy skills is essential and must be embedded into daily instruction. Effective literacy instruction encompasses multiple instructional strategies within the four language domains and various forms of assessment. Data from instruction and assessment are utilized to provide more individualized instruction and supports for students. Instructional decisions are based on data and outcomes. Students need timely guided instruction when their brains and developmental levels are ready to complete the task. As students move through successive stages, it is important to offer literacy opportunities that are aligned to their ability that supports the development of their skills in the stage that they are within. And it is also important that the work challenges them to continue to progress through the literacy stages. It is important to support improved cognitive tasks where stu the students are doing the thinking and the self-correcting. Teachers should promote self-regulated learning. Literacy is the key to education. We must ensure that all students are provided equitable opportunities to develop their literacy skills.